Ontario and in the traditional territories of the Mixasagas of the New Credit First Nations, known as the Anishinaabe peoples. Members of the press and supporters alike, thank you for being here today. My name is Clayton Thomas Mueller, and I'm a Cree man from Pugatawagan First Nation, and I am the Tar Sands campaigner with the Indigenous Environmental Network and I'm here today to serve as your moderator. The Yinka Denny Alliance is a coalition of carrier Sakani First Nations in Northern BC that includes the Nutley, Wet'uwet'en, the Nakazlil, the Saikas, and the Wet'suwet'en First Nations, whose territory comprises 25% of the proposed Enbridge Northern Gateway Oil Pipelines and Tankers Project. They have led this freedom train and traveled with allies who are here today, like the Haida Nation, the Coastal First Nations, and the Tsleil-Waututh, and First Nations from Alberta and the Prairies. We're joined as well by the National Chief of the Dene Nation in the Northwest Territories in Northern Alberta, where communities are heavily impacted by the controversial tar sands. National Chief Billy Erasmus, who will be speaking later. The Yinka Denny Alliance have joined forces with other First Nations to make sure that the Enbridge Northern Gateway Tar Sands Oil Pipeline and Tanker Proposal is never built. Not only they, but over 130 other First Nations have committed to this. They have decided to refuse consent for the pipeline and oil tankers through their lands, representing much of the landmass in British Columbia, including the North and South Pacific coastal lines. Their decisions captured in the Save the Fraser Declaration and the Coastal First Nations Declaration are exercises of these nations' constitutionally protected title and rights. They have serious legal implications for Enbridge, as we will hear shortly. And they are available for members of the press in your packages. Now the train has arrived here at its final destination, 
and the Freedom Train is about to roll into Enbridge shareholders meeting just down the street at 1.30 p.m. at the King Edward Hotel. Now our chiefs and representatives will give brief statements. Their names and spellings are being handed out to replace the ones in your kits as some changes were made, so please do take note of that. And afterwards, we will have a short question and answer period, and chiefs will be available for individual questions, should you so wish. <clears throat> Immediately following that, we will move outside to the square and hold a mixing of the water ceremony. Now each nation has brought water from their territory, from the sacred rivers, and from the ocean that they rely on for their survival. They will be mixing these waters together as a demonstration of their unity and solidarity as peoples of the land, and the unity of all peoples. Water unifies us as human beings. It is the only common thread that binds each and every one of us. And the mixing of the water ceremony symbolizes this. And it also means that like the water, we all flow together from here on. We will now begin with the statements. I would like to introduce Chief Martin Louis Thomas of the Nutley-Wetuwetan First Nation. Correction, Martin Louis. <laughs> Good morning. Humans. I like to say that because that's who we all are. I like to recognize the land that we're on, the traditional territory of Mississauga of New Credit, and thank them for allowing the Dene and Kadene people. Daket to do business on their land. I'd like to start to begin with just a little statement about our country. Everyone called Canada here. I'm sad this morning to hear the type of things that the media is bringing out on us First Nation people, Aboriginal people of this country. They talk of us. <coughs> with racism comments. In the media, it hurts. We're respected people. We respect everybody. Even the people that we're fighting against right now, we respect them because they accomplish things that they want to. And our people, Dakhetne, we do respect. We raise to respect people. And to hear comments like this from the media hurts me. Keep it like this, divide the country. Keep the country divided. And if you, as Canadians, want to do business, do it in proper manner on our land. Ottawa, and support this pipeline through the Taket in Kadene land, British Columbia. Our land in BC is unceded. And we guarantee that we will take legal action if that's what we, the final thing we have to do. And it won't be from the Dekhetne and Kadene. It'll be from every other First Nations that believes 
in the survival of the future of our people. Harper, we understand industries are the basis of the, the Canadian government. And you use your legislation to weaken our environmental policies that protects the land. We're here not, not to try to harm anybody. We're here to make everybody understand that we do have a voice. Canadian people has, have a voice. And we're here to fight for every one of your children. Talking about your children. My children. Every one of the academy children. We can't allow governments to carry on the way they're doing right now. Using their legislation and policies, regulations to destroy the country. There are the means of making money. There are other means of making money. We're going to stand up as your Cadena people to fight to the end. We're here to stay and we're here to ensure the future of our children. And Harper, if you really want to know who we are, come and see us. We're open. Anything you bring, any discussions you want to talk with us about, we listen, we talk. We make the country better if you don't look at us as we're, we're nobody. And that's what Canadian governments are making the First Nations, Aboriginal people in Canada. Seems like we're not here. We're here. We're here in Toronto. We came a long distance to make everybody know that we're still alive and well. Our traditions are still alive and well. Our culture, that's what we live by. On this project, the government, Canadian government, has changed any environmental laws to push a project through. They hide behind the Constitution of Canada to do these things. And we're not hiding anywhere. We're here, you can see us. We're here to voice our concerns about the future of the human people. Not only are you attacking the Aboriginal people in BC, there's other race, every race in BC, that's up to 4.5 million people. Two major, major water streams that's going to be destroyed because you want few jobs for a little bit of people, which only one company is going to make the money on and leave, leave our country. The governments have to start listening. It's going to cost a lot of money to go to courts. It costs a lot of money to do anything to try to stop us. We don't have money and we came over here and I play with the NA and the Kadene people. We put our money together to come here on our own. Of 
course, we have people to back us in the law, in any environmental things that we know that has to be fixed. We came in here on our own. I want everybody to know that. Because we know in our hearts we have to protect the land and the water in BC. Without that, the existence of the human people are going to go down. The human race. That's what you're attacking. Governments are attacking the human race. Everybody knows that. Everybody has to stand and talk. Tell the governments, not only me, everybody else around you, anybody that's out there that knows there's something wrong, to speak up. And we know they're wrong. The government is wrong. And when Aboriginal people say that the government is wrong, we get in trouble because they attack us in any way they can. And they change the law to make sure that they try to fulfill their, what they think is right. And it's not. Everybody knows we're right and we're here. And we're not going to go away. We've been here for, since European came onto this land and we're still here and we're not going to leave. It's our country. We want to share, we share properly. That's what we're taught. They never beat us in a war. We're here to stay. I hope everybody, anywhere, that's listening, Canada, United States, the whole world, do you understand that you Kadene people are standing up for our rights. We do have rights as human beings. We're going to make sure that everybody knows you know, the only ones that's having problems is everybody in the world are having problems. We have to get together to save this worry. That's all I have to say. It's not China. <clears throat> Our next speaker that I would like to introduce is Chief Jackie Thomas of the Sykus First Nation. Chief Thomas, please. Before I provide my comments and bring greetings from my people at home, I would like to acknowledge the territories that we're on the Mississauga of New Credit, and uh, I have Ron here. I'd like to present our gifts to. As First Nation people, that's my first job, is to acknowledge my brothers and sisters and their territory and their land that we're coming to do business on. So with that, Good morning. My name is Jackie Thomas and I, I am uh, one of the communities from the Yinka Dene Alliance. Enbridge must have some trouble with its ears. We met the CEO last year, the board of directors, one year ago in Calgary and told them clearly there is no way we will agree to this pipeline. We told them that we will do everything in our power to stop it. Instead of recognizing the trouble they were in, they respond with more boilerplate, saying in the media this week that they hope to talk with us about benefits, like you're reading a brochure. 
There's nothing, there is nothing to talk about in terms of benefits. Enbridge Northern Gateway is a project that we sim simply cannot accept. And we will never accept. We will attend the Enbridge shareholder meeting today on shareholder proxies, supported by our communities and many other people gathered outside the meeting. We will tell them again, and their institutional investors, financiers, and shareholders, that their project is not going ahead. And they're putting their, comp their company and their reputation at serious legal and financial risk. It doesn't matter what money they offer. Our fight has never been about money. It is about our way of life. That's what you media here in Central Canada need to understand. This isn't about deals. We know Enbridge will talk a good line about deals they may have here with First Nation. We don't comment about the business of other First Nations. But however much money Enbridge may offer to drive a wedge in our opposition, we assure you, our nation stand firm. Industry and government's divide, typical divide and conquer tactics are not going to work. We are engaged in all sorts of business opportunities and ventures. But there will be no deal with Enbridge. Not ever. Anybody who thinks that's why we're here is making a real error in their analysis. Like anybody else, we make business decisions based on an assessment of risk. This, this risk presented is far too great and we say no. We will not back down. We will not tire or waver in defending our children and our culture from Enbridge's threat. There are over 100 First Nations that have signed the Save the Fraser De Declaration which is an outright ban on Enbridge's project. More have signed on the Coastal First Nations declaration banning tankers in the North Coast. In total, more than 130 First Nations are opposed, stretching from the U.S. border to the Arctic Ocean. Tar sands, pipelines, simply won't be built to the Pacific Coast. We are going to enforce our decision to legally stop the pipeline that we have made using every lawful means necessary, both here at home and out in the world. We will not expose our grandchildren to the risk of an oil spill. If you were in our position, you wouldn't either. We won't stand by and let our communities downstream of the tar sands experience even more environmental harm from the runaway expansion of the oil extraction that Northern Gateway would allow. I would add that Enbridge can take no comfort from the federal review process. That process is deeply flawed and not for the reasons Harper says it is. It is flawed in that it cannot fulfill the government's constitutionally protected duty to First Nation people. It cannot deal with our First Nation rights and title. That is why we are not intervening in the process. And in the last, in the last few months, we've had other First Nations pull out of that process. The federal process won't make sure that the pipeline gets built because the First Nations are gearing up for a legal battle and collectively First Nations will ensure that this pipeline is stopped. I want to thank you for listening to my words and I'll, I'll just keep it at that. Merci. His words, uh, Chief Thomas. The next speaker that I have the honor and privilege to introduce is Hereditary Chief Namox, 
are the Seyu clan of the Wet'suwet'en First Nation. Chief Neymans. Denny Zayu, Saka Zayu, Sky Zayu. I am Chief Neymans of the Tayu clan of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. I sit as a Prime Minister in our nation. There are 13 Prime Ministers in our nation, not one. We are not elected, we are hereditary. Make no mistake, we will not allow Enbridge's pipeline project to be constructed in our territory, not ever. We are a government. We are a law. Our law says this cannot happen. A single oil spill into any of our territories would be devastating to our culture, which depends on our rivers. And for our brothers and sisters to the west, on the coast they depend on this. Our family practices, our food, our culture, our language is at risk. That's why we've come to Toronto and will attend the Enbridge AGM on proxy this afternoon. People are out there, as Chief Louis has said, saying that we're paid to do this. We don't do this. This is our heart. We do this because our heart tells us it's right. This afternoon, we want to make it clear because the government of Canada and Enbridge seem to have hearing problems. This pipeline, this tanker route, will never be built. When it builds, Namox dies. The human being will die. The culture will never will. This is why this project never will be built. We have traveled from our territories on the Freedom Train. We journeyed right across Canada. I'm honored to represent my nation, to join our neighbors, the people of Canada, on this journey. We're making history. You are making history by listening to our voices. In each place we visited, Jasper, Edmonton, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, and now Toronto. We have met with amazing local support. Hundreds of people have shown up from all walks of life, from all cultures. Canada is the melting pot of culture. We as First Nations people are the first culture. We are the first voice. People have come out we took a train, and they have short stops. They've taken the time of their life to show their support, show their heart, and look us in the eye and make sure we're telling the truth. We tell the truth. My blanket will not let me lie. I am not elected. I am not paid. In Cockney, people of the land, people of the heart. They inspire us. They make us humble. As a high chief, you have to be humble. You have to listen. You elect people, and they don't listen. I'm not elected. I have to listen. I have to speak from my heart. It is clear to us that more and more Canadians are, jo are joining the majority of British Columbians in opposing this project. Since we've got on the train, there is an excess of 13,000 people have signed on to our petition. That's since we got on the train. As people across Canada, you are guests in our country. We have a democratic right to speak as you do. Two thirds of the people from the province we come from, British Columbia, are opposed to this project. And it's because they are learning the dangers that are affecting each and every person. 
Across Canada, you have to realize this. We've not seen this type of unity before. When you're right, people will join you. When you speak, people will listen. Speak from the heart. Walk the walk. Money is not going to make the world continue. Water, land, people will. The Prime Minister that you elected, again, I am not elected, I am a hereditary chief. The Prime Minister that you have elected is now engaged in a destructive effort So hard for me to say this because as a chief I cannot tell lies, I cannot tell stories that are not true. This is a story that is not true. He is going to eliminate many of the key environmental protections that have been built up over the last 30 years. We believe that the government is not betraying not only us, it is betraying you. Oil is going to destroy your rights. You are here as friends, we are here as friends. Do not let them destroy our friendship. Parliament is debating right now. Our Parliament, our House of Governance, our Peace Hall, our Place of Worship has already debated this. There's no debate left. It's no. Changes such as removing protection from fi for fish habitat is poor public policy for Canadians. Making changes without consulting First Nations, the First Peoples of this world, not only of this land, of this world, will not happen. To disrespect us is to disrespect yourself. You have to understand, every morning when you get up, you have to respect yourself, otherwise you don't breathe. Respect is breathing, it's drinking clear water. The changes that this elected government is doing will not happen. I am Namak. My name will continue for thousands of years. My body will change to another one. You need to change this body of government because we will not change ours. Yes, I. I'll be careful how I say this. We're, we're like modern people, you see. Um, I don't use the word modern because because if I say tradition, they say, oh yeah, 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 you guys, that's 100, 200, 300 years ago. You gotta be modern. So I don't mean modern in that, uh, you know, we still don't know what we knew 200, 300 years ago. But um, us, uh, us modern guys that uh, can use our little computers and stuff like that, this is, the reason I'm going to talk a little bit about this because this is important. Uh, as the national chief, I'm also uh, the uh, AFN regional chief. AFN is the Assembly of First Nations. And I'm on the executive of that body. And actually, they're meeting in Ottawa right now. And I chose to, to be here rather than be there because uh, we have to support our people. And I'll speak a little bit in my language that I think some of them will understand here because it's so close. I've been Changing words this morning. Masi, si Bill Erasmus kawul cho denination donto nzidye. Masi, si kawul cho denende donto kawul cho kunde nzidye. Masi. What I'm saying is that my name is Bill Erasmus and I'm the head of the denination and these people are part of the denination. We are from. Way up north, I didn't talk about it, but we have a word 
for for the Arctic Ocean, we say Yabati. You probably say Yabatwe, but it means Arctic Ocean. Yampa. Yampa. He says Yampa. We say Yampa. So where he put a P, we put a B. Well, that's how close we are. The same language, same people, just different dialect. So that's why I'm here. We got a call from these people some time ago. They came to our assembly and they asked us for assistance. And so in our way, we're compelled to help compelled to come together and I'll just tell you a little story there's an area they call the Peace River have people heard of that just put up your hand if you heard of the Peace River okay you've heard of the Peace River well what happened the reason they call it the Peace River is because our people in that area the people in that area began to fight years ago and it's not common for us to fight very long. Our history tells us that we don't fight forever. Our fights are short and we come to peace. And some of you will appreciate this year, it's uh, 1812, the, the Battle of 1812, it's 200 years. Uh, people, the French and the English fighting over our land in this area. And well, it happened in other places. And as the European population moved west, <coughs> they began to move our people north and west, further into these people's territory. And they began to fight in that area. What they call the Cree, which is Clayton's people, the Nahiwin, they began to push our people further north. They began to fight. And our people called upon our other people down the Mackenzie River all the way to the ocean asking for help. So we, because of our language and our ways, began to come and help. And as we got there, we asked the people, why are you fighting? And they said, Sonny, we don't know. Sonny, they're fighting us. So we're fighting back. So you know how you fight when you're a boxer or when you're talking to a reporter that's aggressive to you? <laughs> we got ready to fight. We we're going to help them. And more people were coming. They're coming from our area. They're coming from what is called the Yukon now. And they're coming from what is called Alaska now because that's all our territory. They're coming from everywhere to help. And as people come, they said, why are we fighting? And they said, Sony. We're protecting our territory. So finally a woman, like these ladies here, a woman said, well, who are those people? And they said, well, I think they're, I think they're those people that speak that other language, they live over there. She said, well, we talk that language. We have relatives over there. We're married into them. So she said, well, let's stop this. This don't make sense. Let's stop this and let's talk to them. So our people have a sign language. You'll notice that we talk with our hands. And those other people understood our language, so they stopped fighting. Start talking to one another. The ladies were translating for our people. And right away they found out that they were being pushed this way because there was no more buffalo. There was no more food for them to eat because the train was coming west. Because those people were being pushed onto small pieces of land, onto reservations. And they had to come north because they wanted moose, and they wanted caribou, and they wanted to stay alive. So our people right away said, no problem, you can come north. There's a river here. Denetsha, Den means river. Denetsha means it's a big river. Denet you guys stay on that side, we'll stay on this side. That's it. Peace treaty. So that's why they call it the Peace River. That's the history. There's all kinds of places like that all over what is called Canada, what is called the United States. This is all one island. It's a North American island, Turtle Island. 
So we're used to getting into little scrimmages, little battles, but we make peace amongst ourselves. And the problem is the new people that come here don't know how to make peace. They don't realize, or they do realize, and they don't know how to get out of it. But we will teach them that you can't fight us on our own land because we've never given up this land. We were never conquered. The French, for example, have been conquered. The Prime Minister still calls it a French nation. We're not quite sure how he does that. I don't know how he calls Quebec a nation when Canada's not a nation. Canada's not a nation because it didn't enter into treaties with us. Great Britain is the nation. Canada is part of the Commonwealth. Canada is a state. But we are nations. You heard them say they're nations. And most of these people are not part of a treaty area. I'm from Treaty 8. We also have Treaty 11. And when we made hearings in Edmonton, our people said, you can't go on these people's land because the Canadian Constitution says you can't. There's a royal proclamation that says these people are nations. They own the land. If you come on their land, you have to have an agreement. If you don't have an agreement to come on their lands. That's all I have to say right now. Thank you. Certainly, as our other chiefs, definitely wise. Thank you, National Chief Erasmus. Um, I would like to now invite up to the to the podium Ron Klein, who is a Anishinaabe environmental policy analyst for many First Nations and activist for Indigenous rights from Omgenong First Nation. Uh, here in Southern Ontario. Please join me in welcoming Ron to the podium. Thank you. Um, bearing in mind time, I will be very short and sweet. Um, I was asked to come and speak at this uh, uh, shareholder meeting because of the impacts of another pipe that's in the ground already called Line 9, uh, the Trailbreaker uh, Line. And, um, when I heard of the uh, train coming down here, I had no, no, no chance but to say no. I have to come and say no. I have to say no to Line 9. I have to say no to the Northern Gateway. I have to show support to these people that are my brothers and my sisters. As I was sitting here waiting, I was talking to the people in the Maliseet Nation, and they said, show our support, come. Tell them we said hi, and we're with you. Coast to coast, we have to stand together. I represent seven First Nations in Ontario, in southwestern Ontario, and that Line 9 is going to go directly through our territories. My home, Anjanon, was called the most polluted spot in North America by the National Geographic staff. It was said to have the most contaminated air by the World Health Organization. Y'all heard the story of the Dreamcatcher, but we're the center of that Dreamcatcher. We're where all the nightmares of the industry fall. We have the cancers. We are the only human population in the world to have documented endocrine disruption. I don't want that for these people that are now my friends, my family. We see the pictures that come out of my community, and I've shown these people the pictures from my community, and it scares them because they see that future. From 1970 forward, Line 9 has been in the ground. And I don't want to say that I know anything about pipe integrity or the maintenance program that goes into it, but Line 9's been in the ground longer than the pipe that split in Kalamazoo, Michigan last year. That oil is still on the ground. That's what scares these people. Not the pipe and not the product, that's bad enough, but one small incident doesn't get reacted upon fast enough. They fight amongst themselves to see who's going to take responsibility for that spill. And while they're fighting, the oil will continue to flow. So from my community and from the communities that I've spoken with across Canada, welcome to our territories. And uh, I know I speak for uh, the communities right across the country when I say welcome. To you. Thank you. Um, I would like to introduce James Kalpar, president of the Coastal First Nations. James?
Thank you, Singela. Good day. On behalf of the Coastal First Nations, we too would also like to thank the local host First Nation for allowing us to conduct business on their traditional territory. As you heard, my name is James Kalbar, President of the Coastal First Nations and a councillor from Skidigan, one of two Haida communities on Haida Gwaii. Just to introduce my colleague to my right, we have Miss April Churchill, Vice President of the Council of the Haida Nation. Our nation is on the island known as Haida Gwaii. The Coastal First Nations are an alliance of nine First Nations on the north and central coast of British Columbia, including the Haisla, where the, An the Enbridge Tanker Port would be, and the Gitgat and my own nation, Haida, which would see tankers going past our communities almost every day on account of Enbridge proposal. We are working to create conservation-based conservation economy on the coast. Our region is fundamentally different than we are sitting here. We continue to make our living and sustain our culture from the land and sea. We aim to do this and to do it better by reducing the carbon footprint of our own economic activities and pursuing clean renewables. Bringing crude oil supertankers to some of the most dangerous waters in the world, the waters of the Pacific North Coast, and where navigation is highly challenging, is frankly crazy. It doesn't matter where technological safety features are put into place, the risk of an oil spill can't be eliminated and won't accept any amount of risk as the consequences are too high. Our nations passed the Coastal First Nations Declaration banning oil tankers from our territories in 2010. We stand behind that decision. Many First Nations right now are gearing up to wage a legal battle against these pipelines and tankers. It is something that we enjoy and we look forward to do. But it is our duty to protect our lands and our children's futures. And if that means going to court, we guarantee you we'll be there. As far as we know, Enbridge has yet to ink a single firm deal with any company to transport oil through the Northern Gateway. It's not hard to imagine why. The project is a goner. It's not going to happen, and our broad and growing coalition of nations, backed by the general public, by municipalities, will see to it. Hawa. The Yinka Dene and their allies have taken this freedom train to enforce this legal decision to ban the Enbridge Northern Gateway tar sands pipeline and tankers from our territories and to protect all people from this. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. <coughs> Here we go. Thank you. So now we have time. <laughs> <laughs> it ran through Jasper, Edmonton, Saskatoon, and Winnipeg with hugely successful events along the way. Both rallies and more intimate community events where local First Nations and non-Native people came out to share meals with the travelers and to offer their support. We now have a few minutes for questions and answers. Please state your name and who your question is addressed to. My name is Himi Syed, I'm just a blogger, but my question is what should people in Toronto at the city level come to understand, appreciate, and beyond just marching today in the next hour or so, can we do? Chief <coughs> Nomad. What can you do? You've listened to the speakers. You've been told what to do. We are the people of the land. We are the people of the water. We are the people of the sky. We are the people of the heart. Follow your heart. It will tell you. It will tell you to support us. It will tell you that every day you must drink clean water. It tells you every day that you 
you must love your children. Uh, your heart will tell you what to do. We are here to educate you. We ask for your support, but your heart will tell you what to do. Because our heart tells us what to do. That is your answer. Besides. Members of the press, interviews will be available after uh, we conclude this portion. Uh, we will be going outside shortly for the water ceremony, but I must say that we need to wrap up, unfortunately, because of the fact that we have a rally to get to. But um, <clears throat> we are about to begin the mixing of the water ceremony and rally outside before our march to the Enbridge annual meeting. Each nation has brought water from their territory, from the sacred rivers and from the ocean that they rely on for their survival. They will be mixing these waters together as a demonstration of their unity and solidarity. Again, just to remind us, water is the common thread that binds us all. And the mixing of these waters and this ceremony symbolizes this bond. <laughs> And it also means, like the water, we all flow together from here on. So with that, I would like to thank you for being here for our press conference. And please join us outside for the water mixing ceremony and the rally. Aho, kinanasko manawa.